Hi, I'm Scott from Blue Mountain Bigfoot Research. I'm Hannah from Squatching with Hannah. And Happy New Year. It is January 1st, 2020. And we've had a lot of changes happen in the last year and we have a lot of plans for next year. And this is our little video to show you what's going on. And how our seven year plan to become full-time RVers didn't quite work out like that. Uh, no, it kind of turned into what, a... One, one and a half year one plan? One and a half year plan. One and a half year plan. So today we want to just kind of share with everyone how um, We've become full-time RVers in just a year and a half and give you a tour of our new home. So here we go. You know about our Bigfoot squatching truck and we've got a video and I'll link that above um, on what it entails. But what you don't know is uh, our brand new RV. Okay, this is our, new to us, 2016 Outdoors RV Blackstone. And one of the reasons we chose this is we did a lot of research in the last year and a half. Uh, watched a lot of YouTube videos about campers and we toured a couple, well actually several, um, RV factories. And this was our dream choice. Now, we just sold our almost 5,000 foot square home. Uh, put what we wanted to keep in storage, sold everything else we owned and bought this. And uh, the reason we bought an Outdoors RV is because it is really, truly a Four Seasons camper. It has everything insulated. It has two inch thick walls instead of one inch thick walls. It has a lot of stuff, but we'll go through that later. But here's our new So home. coming from uh, actually uh, like a 4,500 square foot historic home in our local downtown to um, a 28 foot long camper, has been kind of a challenge and uh, we had originally planned seven years to make that transition um, it went way faster than that so um, but I want to give you a tour of our new 200 square foot living space and um, and I hope you'll find it just as warm and cozy as we find it so our first challenge was finding uh, a place to hang our coats and I had a lot of coats because I'm you know, 50 years old, and I never know whether I'm going to be hot, cold, or somewhere in the middle. So I have the big heavy coat, and I have the sweater, and I have the raincoat, and all these things. And Oregon, you never know what the weather's going to be anyway. So um, we made a makeshift closet with a hook and four hangers, and that's our closet. So, and this is our great room. It has everything that any great room in any beautiful home has. It has a living room. Complete with recliners. I've never owned a recliner in my life until we bought this camper. I don't know where I've been or what I was thinking, but recliners are definitely the way to go. Um, we have a pull-out sofa for guests, primarily grandchildren. We have a fireplace. The campers have really come up since that that truck camper my grandparents had, you know, 40 some years ago. Fireplace. We have a great big smart TV and over here we have the heart of the home of course which is always the kitchen I have to be honest I was a little concerned about kitchen space because I am kind of like a little Pauline mini me I love to cook I love to entertain I love to do all the things in the kitchen when we lived in our big house I lived in the kitchen I had an office, but I would haul all my stuff from the office into the kitchen and sit at the island and do my stuff in the kitchen. I just love the kitchen. And um, I, I had a, a five burner double oven, you know, pantry style refrigerator and, and all those things. And so we were really looking for a kitchen that, that could work for my cooking style. And this is a rear kitchen kind of in the back side of it. It is not on a slide out, which actually is kind of good because there's a lot of weight here. We don't have anything um, too heavy on the slide out. So we've got a double sink. We've got a three burner stove. Um, we have an oven. 
that I can tell you right now will not cook a Thanksgiving turkey. It might cook a Cornish hen. Fortunately, we have an electric turkey roaster that we hauled out from our storage unit to use for the turkey. But, um, but so far, after two months of living here, um, I've been able to cook anything I wanted to cook. And maybe I didn't need five burners and two ovens and a pantry double door refrigerator. Um, our refrigerator is about eight cubic feet and it holds everything we need it to hold. I've started shopping just once a week um, for a week's worth of, of food and it is just fine. And I have found that by doing that, by not trying to do this mammoth shopping trip and shove it all in the refrigerator like I used to, um, I don't have any food going bad because we eat it all in the week. So it's been actually kind of a, a savings on our food budget and it's made life a lot simpler. Over here we have the dinette, which serves right now primarily as Edgar Allen's nap spot. Hey Edgar, say hello. Mm. Anyway, um, what's really nice about this dinette is that um, it's we loved the U-shape. We like the U-shaped dinette. We think that's really, um, really classy. But when we need to, we can rearrange it, pull out the center section, and um, turn the table so that it turns into a regular booth style um, dinette with an extra seat out here in case we have company. Um, so that is the great room. And as you can see, tons and tons of storage. I have got, I have got seven drawers. I've got under sink storage three cabinets and all these cabinets in here for storage. So we're going to go into the master suite now, actually the only suite, but um, our last house had five bedrooms in it. Uh, we had five bedrooms. We had a uh, dining room, living room, parlor, kitchen, three bathrooms, amazing amount of storage, three stories. And what we uh, when we were when we were talking about this massive transition, we we did the math, and and out of 4,500 square feet, we lived in about 300 of that. Uh, most of our mortgage payment was going to a house that we walked through, and so um, the master suite is now much smaller. But you know what? We still sleep in the same amount of bed that we did in a 4,500 square foot home. So come on back here to bedroom. Welcome to our bedroom. I know it sounds a little creepy when I say it like that, but this is our bedroom. And um, the first thing you need to know, this is a full size standard queen mattress. Um, it is not, however, the mattress that came with the rig. All those wonderful, you know, camper mattresses that, that you hear about. We slept on our camper mattress for about a month, decided it was just not going to work, uh, work for us um, or our need for deep, undisturbed, not tossing and turning sleep. And so um, we invested about $800 in a new mattress. Now this is not sponsored in any way. Um, I'm not getting any money to say this, but we are so pleased with this mattress. We just wanted to tell you that we bought a Tuft & Needle Mint mattress, full queen size. It's about 10 inches thick, all these layers of memory foam. And I tell you what, I have never slept so well in my life. Um, I've always slept better when we've gone camping. I love sleeping in a camper. There's just something really warm and cozy and comfortable about it. But after getting this mattress, I don't get up at night. I don't toss and turn. I generally wake up in the same position I started in the morning. So I'm getting some really good sleep since we moved in here. Super comfortable. Um, we have now one of our slide outs is the wardrobe. So this is now in our old house. I had my own walk-in closet. We actually both had our own walk-in closets. His was half the size of mine, maybe a third the size of mine. But I had a walk-in closet, I had a dressing area, um, all those things that we think are so important. These, this is my two-thirds of the wardrobe, and this is Scott's third of the wardrobe. <laughs> Um, but we've got this, this slide out that serves as a wardrobe. We've got um, clothing cabinets on each side and a great big storage unit above the bed where I keep my shoes. 
and I pared my shoes down. People wonder, well, what do you do with all your stuff? Well, you know, I, I just really analyze what do I wear every day? You know, in an average two week span, what do I wear? And I boiled it down to four pair of shoes. I've got a pair of tennis shoes. I have a pair of comfortable work shoes. I have a pair of dress shoes and I have a pair of sandals. Oh, and hiking boots. So I guess I don't count the sandals. But anyway, I pared it down from like 15 pair of shoes, some of which I wore once a year, once every other year, to just the shoes and the clothes that I know I am going to wear to work um, and in the community, you know, every two weeks. So from a huge walk-in closet to um, four shelves, four tiny shelves and a slide out uh, wardrobe. That's a pretty big uh, downsize. But this is our bedroom. What Scott likes about the bedroom is this. And this was a feature we didn't see in necessarily other rigs. The TV that comes down. He's got his 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 little stick thingy in there that makes it a smart TV. So everything we get on our smart TV in the front room, we can get in here. And um, of course, we have AI throughout the trailer. So all he has to say is, Alexa, turn on my fire stick. And there she goes. And she will turn everything on. And I actually think that turned on the TV. So anyway, Alexa, stop. And this is our bathroom. Now, aside from the kitchen, which is kind of a luxury anyway, because I know there are a lot of people who, you know, cook with, you know, hot plates. And that's fine. Um, I think the biggest transition we've had to make is going from three bathrooms, one on each floor. You never had to use a flight of stairs to reach a bathroom, which at midlife is a very important thing. Um, from that to one tiny little economy efficiency bathroom. So this is our bathroom. But it's a full bath. Um, we have everything in here that we had in our big house. We have a toilet. Um, we have a sink, a fully functional sink, a great big sizable medicine cabinet with, I have to say, really good makeup lighting. And because I work, um, I'm a teacher and I have to look at least somewhat decent for, you know, my public, my adoring fans, otherwise known as my students. Um, great makeup lighting. We have actually quite a big bathroom storage linen closet. We've got room for our towels. We've got room for all of our toiletries, all of our first aid supplies, our cleaning supplies everything in there huge three shelves of linen cabinet i had a linen cabinet so big in my last bathroom i didn't know what to fill it up with so um in case you're wondering when we released our video a year and a half ago it was i think july or august of 2018 our seven year plan was to um downsize slowly continue working on our house to make it super marketable. So we wanted to make sure we would get a good appreciation off of it and um, so that we could go into full-time RVing uh, with no debt and, and, a, and a financial cushion under us. You know, we wanted to have all of our ducks in a row. And so why are we sitting here 18 months later already full-time RVing? Um, well, our seven-year plan was kind of based around our retirement plans. Scott, it will be eligible for retirement in, you know, when in, I don't know what, another six year, mm -hmm. no, six, years. six, five, six years, whatever. Anyway, our seven-year plan kind of focused on his uh, drawing Social Security. And um, with that, I could easily get online, um, online employment. Um, I have enough degrees, degrees to do just about anything for anyone, anywhere, for, in any venue. Because um, I've been a bit of a professional student throughout my life. Uh, but uh, last summer, we had an experience with our grandson that kind of changed our minds about that. Yeah, we did. We, uh, we uh, took our tent that we had at that time. And uh, really nice, really super nice. Uh, Flexbo Kodiak tent. Not, not sponsored. sponsored. <laughs> we, uh, uh, <clears throat> took uh, my grandson to Montana. We did some squatching. 
up there um, for two weeks. We stayed in a campground, uh, so we had, you know, some like toilets and uh, water. What, yeah. yeah, we were able had access to water. But um, I set up quite a gourmet kitchen when we're roughing it like oh, that. We let me did. Tell you. <laughs> um, but what we did is we fell in love with just that two weeks in the woods. Um, you know, I spend a stupid amount of times in the woods all the time by myself and sometimes with Hannah, but um, the freedom of being out there for two weeks and just saying, hey, today we're going to go do this or maybe not because the weather's bad. And, and completely unplugged from any technology. There wasn't cell service for like 50 miles. And so unplugged from email and and YouTube and any of that. Yeah, um, the only interruption we had was about six o'clock in the morning, uh, there was some metal signs that came into the park and this woodpecker would go peck the metal sign. About seven o'clock in the morning, um, I tried for those two weeks setting up trail cameras, try to catch him to do that, just so I could show it to people. And uh, <laughs> it, that was that was fun. It was, but it was kind of annoying at seven o'clock in the morning, you know, ding, ding, ding. But, but who cares? Because you can sleep till ten if your heart <laughs> desires. Yeah. Or um, it was it was just, you know, I would go out in the morning and I would I just kind of sit by the river that went through the campground and just kind of exist without any any external pressure to do anything but just be and um and then of course we had a grandson yeah. who we have never we uh, up until that time we had never spent any significant amount of time significant dedicated amount of time with and i think we fell in love with being grandparents no we did it was a lot of fun and um i think he fell in love with being in the woods too um he hadn't spent a lot of time doing that and he's a city boy yeah but um he spent a night in a thunderstorm in a hammock uh with a tarp <laughs> over it and everything um well he spent half the night the rest of the night he came, ended up in the tent with us but after the after the bulk of the storm passed <laughs> yeah but <clears throat> He was he was he was just snug as a bug and rug, totally dry. Yeah, you know? and he loved it. I kept hollering over, "Are you okay?" And he goes, "I'm fine." But uh, we finally brought him in just in case. Uh, but it was a lot of fun. So uh, future plans. So, so so that actually that's what drove our decision to change it from a, a seven year plan to a, well, let's just do it now. We came home. Um, we said, you know, honestly, we are paying a mortgage payment every month and stupid amounts of utility bills for a house that we live in with, with animals and we walk through to live in 300 square feet of it. Um, why are we doing that when we could invest our resources in being able to go out when we want to go out, spend time with our, our grandkids and our kids when we want to, kind of on our own terms. Mm -hmm. And so... We got home, we put our house up on the market, fully assuming, because we know the market in our area, fully assuming it would be at least a year before anyone even nibbled at it. And three weeks later, it sold for $100,000 more than we bought it for. As is, no special anything. It just, yeah. the, the market in our town did this weird thing and, and we cashed in on it. And so we could buy our rig outright. Um, and we could pay off the vast majority of our financial obligations so that we are now living in a local uh, a local campground um, free and clear, which is amazing. I don't think we've ever experienced that in our entire adult <laughs> lives, being not beholden to anyone. Um, we still work uh, during the year. We are, we are here at this cute little campground um, for a fraction of what we were paying as, as uh, sticks and bricks homeowners. Mm -hmm. Um, but future plans include, you know, until the magic retirement age hits when we're not working, um, to be, you know, on, on school holidays, summer vacations, that sort of thing. Yeah, we are we going to be out. We both work for a school district, so we get the, your standard, you know, Christmas vacation, which we're on now. Well, yes. <laughs> and, um, your, uh, you know. Spring break, spring summer break, break. Summer break, all those. Um, so we plan on spending a lot more time. Um, together that, that we never used to yeah. in the woods. Um, of course, pursuing my Sasquatch research 
and uh, her being able to be able to, she wants to, you know, uh, delve further deeper into her blogs that mm -hmm. she's been doing. Yep. So watch it with .com. Go check it out. Yeah. And uh, so we're going to do that. Um, so after Christmas break is over, we got a little stretch to do at school until um, about March 20th. About March 20th, we've got our uh, spring break. We are planning on going to an undisclosed location in uh, in southeastern Washington. <laughs> well, kind of central. South central uh, eastern Washington. Washington. Anyway, up anyway, there, up, up there, there in not quite in the sagebrush, but mm -hmm. um, yeah. So yeah, we'll share more with you. Then. Yeah, we're we'll share that after the fact. Uh, see what we find. Um, also, with the uh, financial gain, we <laughs> the what do you call it the with the ability to save money that <laughs> yes. now we did not have with our with our our housing house. with our financial footprint mm -hmm. as homeowners, we did not have money to put into savings to think about the future to do anything yeah. fun. Yeah, and, and and we have that ability now. Right, all my squashing equipment though I have a lot of really cool stuff. Um, it was just, you know, piecemeal, you know, this month I'll get this part and this month I'll get this part until I can put it all together. Um, now I have the ability we, I did, was able to purchase some, you know, essential equipment that I didn't have before. So our squatching ability has got a lot more tech than it was before. And that was pretty high tech before. Um, but so we, we do have thermal cameras now and I do have, uh, trap cameras that work on a cell service so I can keep an eye on them all the time. Um, I did uh, recently purchase, and this will be coming up in future videos, uh, a, a really junky old for, you know, cheap uh, pop-up camper. Um, it's like our very first camper. Like our very first camper we had. In fact, it's almost identical. <laughs> But um, it is in way worse shape, and it was just pretty much trashed. That's why I got it cheap. Um, we are going to convert that. Um, I say we, but probably I am going to convert that. I'm not converting <laughs> anything, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, into what I had before was this thing called the Squatch Pod, and we had a mobile surveillance unit. So I'm gonna. This will be Squatch Pod, pod Mark Three. Mark Three, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna convert that into a mobile surveillance and lab. So when we're out in the woods, we have all the equipment we need. I have microscopes. I have, um, you know, it had uh, surveillance equipment built into it. And this will have a built-in kitchen, so he can eat while he's researching. Exactly. Uh, um, not that I don't love camp meals, and I make my own dehydrated camp meals, and they're pretty good. Oh, but face it, I'm a much better camp. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but um, so uh, that's some of the future plans, and and so we're going to delve deeper into um, the Sasquatch world and be able to spend more time in the woods and more time even than I did before. And we're also already been lined up to, to hit a couple of these Bigfoot festivals in the future. Which we'll um, be able to go to now because yeah. we're mobile. Yeah, right. So um, so there's one, well, there's already a couple that I'm signed up to speak at. Southern Oregon and uh, Portland, and, Oregon. And, and, yeah. And, and we're looking for a good one. Some if there's, a, if there's a Squatch Festival somewhere in the Minnesota, Wisconsin area towards the end of July, beginning yeah. of August, we would love to see you there because that's Cause the direction we're in. Because we may be there yes. yeah, in that area doing some research, um, so which really helped us out. Um, and Edgar Allen, we don't know what to do with him. <laughs> he may go with us. Yeah, he may be the new squashing cat. So. I don't think there's a squashing cat out there. I don't know, maybe. So I hope you enjoyed that view of his backside. <laughs> yeah. So, shoo, 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 shoo. All right. So, um, with that said, anything else? There is one more thing okay. that we didn't tell you. So, you know, uh, we've watched a lot of these, um, you know, a lot of RV channels. And, and um, as you can see, as you, if you haven't, if, you'll, if you watch the, uh, the video on our truck, um, which got linked above, uh -huh. um, 
Our track's name is Adelaide, and we named her that a long time ago before we were really into the Squatch and thing, and that has a whole other story behind it. But um, our last camper's name was Little Annie because that's the name it came with. Mm -hmm. But everyone seems to name their rigs, and so we were thinking about it, and we asked our Squatch and friends about it, and we have come up with a great name for um, for our new home. Yeah. And so if you're out on the road and you see a big uh, outdoors RV Blackstone camper that says paddy wagon on the side, you will know that is Blue Mountain Bigfoot Research and Squatching with Hannah going down the road. So welcome to the paddy wagon. And if we we're ever in your area and you'd like to meet up, um, I brew a great cup of coffee and um, I love to cook and entertain. So come by and, and you can live our life with us for a few hours. Exactly. That's great. I, I love meeting people. I love hearing Bigfoot stories. Um, I'm always open to that. <laughs> always. Um, so if you, we're working on a few different logos on it right now. I haven't figured out exactly what we're going to do for the logo on it. Um, I worked on one where I was kind of incorporating Blue Mountains logo with mine with Paddy Wagon and, and I decided I didn't like it after I got it done. So um, we're going to work on Good thing I didn't like it either. <laughs> we're going to do some uh, ideas on the logos, but it will say Paddy Wagon on the side of it. And I want to make sure it does have that silhouette of Paddy on it um, from the Roger Patterson film, if you and familiar with Bigfoot World. Um, but, uh, and then it'll of course have our, our websites on it, you know, uh, SquatchOregon.com and SquatchingWithHannah.com. Um, so, so look forward to seeing us out there. If yep. you run across us, don't be afraid to come by. And don't say be a hi. stranger. Yep. So. No one ever really is. We're kind of <laughs> conspicuous. Yeah. So anyway, with that. With that. Um, thanks for watching. And, and keep it squatchy. And keep it squatchy. And like and subscribe. Um, we are this close being monetized not that monetization in youtube is going to help us any but um oh you never know yeah and uh we're working on setting up some other stuff some patron uh stuff so you can go over there and get some exclusive insider bigfoot stuff that i don't produce i don't produce a lot of the stuff we find um i share it with other bigfooters but i don't produce a lot of it to the general public so if you're serious about squatching and mm -hmm. you want some some more info that that you can't find elsewhere his patreon channel will probably be the place yeah. to get it so it's it's a work in progress that's not up yet but we'll let you know when it is so okay. bye bye